Okay champ, we're back with a whiteboard lesson today. So the whiteboard lessons I did last week were obviously out of necessity since our lighting equipment had broken. But then I thought, actually, you know what, for explaining certain concepts, this is the best approach to use. So here we are again with a whiteboard. And today we're gonna to be talking about Fibonacci. Now, you may have noticed by now that the approach we use for Fibonacci is very different to how anyone else does it. And if you do see someone using the same approach that we use, then it'll be because they've learned from us. And the reason's very simple. First of all, it's because we've developed the approach ourselves. And second of all, is that it's not something you could be using in isolation. If you're using Fibonacci in the same way that we're using it, it's because it's linked to the rest of the Duomo market model and the theory that the Duomo method's built upon and using type one and type two closes and that type of thing, which is something that we put together ourselves. So really it's something that links with everything else in the method, which is why I haven't really touched upon Fibonacci so much on this channel up until now, because it's something you need to understand a lot of other concepts to really nail. And obviously with our online course, we teach it in between 12 to 15 hours, the whole curriculum. So it's not something I could particularly teach in a couple of videos on YouTube. But I just wanted to go over something in particular today to try and explain why we don't trade Fibonacci retracements and why I believe that when you see people who are trading Fibonacci retracements, they're probably just not doing something right. So this obviously is relying on a lot of the other concepts that we've discussed. So for example, a couple of weeks ago, we discussed how we reduce uncertainty in the markets. And we've discussed way in the past our type one and type two closes and the reasons for them. And so now I wanna talk about how this links to Fibonacci. So in the market, we've spoken about the structure before. If it's an uptrend, we have higher highs, where the highs are higher than the previous one and higher lows, where the lows are higher than the previous one. Now, these, what we'd call peaks and troughs in the market, so peak, trough, or the hills and valleys, the things that look like the hills here, are what we'd call waves. So let's write that. These are waves. Now, within the waves, we have what we call a range. It's like from top to bottom would be a range. Now what you see a lot of people doing when they're drawing Fibonacci is to take like the top and the bottom of a range or even like the high and low of a day and drawing like their zero to 100 points there and then they have the retracement levels inside. Now what you'll find is that sometimes this will work exceptionally well for them and sometimes it won't work at all. So there's been studies that have come out which have shown that, for example, on this you might have your 61.8 and your 50. And by the way, 50 is not a Fibonacci number, but it is significant because it's the midpoint of the range. And you might have the 38.2 down there. And the studies have shown that when you take this approach where you're just drawing, say, the high and low of a day. So let's say that the day's gone like this and you draw the high and the low and you draw your Fibonacci based on that that the levels come across as being significant, mainly because of your selective attention making them look significant. You're looking at them, you're seeing sort of the reversals happening at them in the future, and you're saying, okay, the retracement levels work. But what they found was that actually, if you change the numbers and did something random, like for example, 72.9, then you'll get exactly the same situation happening. You'll have some reversals in there, it looks like it's working. It's selective attention. If you actually develop an algo system that can test these levels, where you're testing the density of the movement around the levels, which for us represents a significant level if the density of the movement is higher near a significant level from the test that we did. Now, if you do the test like that on these levels, you'll find that the density of movements are actually quite similar across all of those. However, there'll be certain occasions when these retracement levels do work. So why is that? Well, this comes down to exactly the same thing that we do for all of the, the different tools and the approaches we use in the Duomo method, is that we're trying to break things down to a first principle and to confirm things to remove the uncertainty, because if you can break it down to first principles and really understand the building blocks that are making up something, then you can understand when there's something included that's not necessarily correct. So if you understand, for example, the how a Fibonacci is working with the range, 
then you'll understand situations when you have a Fibonacci drawn but it's not correct with the range and therefore the results you're getting are hit and miss. Like for example, when people are trading pin bars, some people trade them all the time because they think they work consistently. But actually when you break it down, there are reasons why some of them are working so well. And therefore, if you understand that, you understand how to remove the ones that aren't going to be working so well. So you're filtering out, you're removing the uncertainty. Remember we've spoken about the uncertainty before. So that's what we were going to do with a Fibonacci. And so the situations where it is working is because they've got it right. And the situations where it's not working is because they've got it wrong. But because they're using one blanket approach for all of it without understanding what's really behind the movements, then they can't tell the difference. Now, what we want to do with our Fibonacci is to confirm the range. So when we draw, for example, our A point and our B point on this, let's change the color so it's easier to see. So for example, if we're drawing the A point here and the B point up here, so we're saying that that's the range, then you actually can't tell for sure that that's the A and the B. Right now we have a line chart, but what happens when you actually change this to a candle chart? Or when you take into account the fact that the charts are scale invariant, that it might be on a different time frame that you're looking at this. In which case, these waves, if you're looking at a higher time frame, might be a wave that's like this. Or if it's on a lower time frame, might be smaller waves like this. There's so many uncertainties for you to be able to just, out of the blue, say that that's point A and that's point B. You need to confirm it. So you don't know, for example, if the point B is on the candle body here, if it's on the candle wick there, that candle wick, if it's on a body over here instead where the wave ends, that's what you need to confirm. So when people draw their Fibonacci range and they get it right, it's because they have, by luck, they've got it right that, on that occasion. But if they're even slightly wrong, then the Fibonacci levels down here are going to be completely off. Now this is why Whenever we're drawing the Fibonacci's, as you may have seen on our technical analysis videos, we're not looking at the A and B point. That's arbitrary. We're moving them around, but based on the C level. So I'm confirming the C level to try and confirm the A and B. Now, the reason for that is that if you've got the correct range, if you've got the correct A to B point, then all of the retracement levels are going to be significant. And when we say a significant level, we mean it's going to attract and repel the price and we can confirm that through our type 1 or type 2 closes. That's not necessarily to say that significant levels can only be significant levels when you get type 1 and type 2 closes, but it's the only way we visually can tell that a level significant. So, in this situation, let's say that we have a movement like this. What we want to do is adjust the point A and the point B to try and find a C level that's going to be on one of the following levels. It's either going to be on the 61.8, on the 50, or on the 38.2. The reason for this is that if you consider that this is 100 and this is zero, that also means that this is one and that's zero, which makes these decimals, right? So that's 0 0.618, that's 0 0.5, the range, that's 0 0.382. Because when you've got numbers like this, they're percentages. If you break it down to decimals, it's like this. So all of the Fibonacci movements, everything is based on the golden mean, which is 1.618. So now we can take our calculations from that. So the inverse of 1.618 is 0.618. You times them together, you get one. One takeaway 0.618 is 0.382, which means it's the other side of the range, that they're both equal proportion from the side of the range. And 50, like I said, it's not a Fibonacci number, but it is significant, so you can confirm the range of it, because that's all we're trying to do is to confirm the range. So, in that case, we want to confirm the C point of a range by getting a type 1 or a type 2 close. And it's by confirming the C point that we confirm the range. Otherwise, the range is not confirmed. There's too much uncertainty because it could be here that is the top of the range. It could be here. It could be here. Who knows? So you confirm it by the C point. And once you have the C point, you'll have a situation like this. Let's switch to another layer. So you will have a situation where you've had the wave and maybe this is where it starts to go back up. You've got your type one or type two closed there. And as a result of that, you can now confirm 
that you've got your A and B points over here. So for example, you have your A, I wanted to do that in a different color. Let's uh, get rid of that. So you have your A, your B, there to there. At that point, you've confirmed your C, let's say that's the 50%. That means there's also like 61.8 up here. There's a 38.2 down here. That's a strange three that I drew. <laughs> 38.2 down here. You've created your 50 and now you can go and find your D point. Now, the people that trade the retracement levels, so for example, they draw their range and they're trading like at 61.8 or a 50% or a 38.2, they're not confirming the range because the range is not confirmed until you get your type one or type two close on these levels or at least failure at one of the levels to confirm its significance. And by that point, the trade's gone anyway because you've already had to move off it. And if the move doesn't happen off it, then it's not confirmed. But then you can't have the trade because it's not a confirmed range. So it's like a it's like a chicken or the egg if you're trying to re trade with the retracements. The retracements are only confirmed once you get the reaction off it, but that's what you're trying to trade. So you can't have that. It just doesn't exist. Instead, you can trade the D levels up here, which is something we'll talk about in another lesson. But the whole point of this video I'm trying to explain to you is that if you want to reduce your uncertainty and you want to make sure that you've got a confirmed range and it's correct, then you can't be trading the retracements. And also a C level is the last level. It's the last retracement that happens if it's going to be significant, which means if you confirm this as your C level and the market does this and goes through, that's no longer a C level. If it retraces up there, that's now the C level. And if that's not one of your retracement levels, then you can't confirm this range. That's the other way around. You can't confirm this range. It's just not possible. So if you know that inside the correct range, the retracement levels are going to be significant and you can identify a significant level from a type one or a type two close, which has the reaction you expect to happen after it, then that means that you can confirm the range by looking at the C level, which means that until you confirm the range by looking at the C level, you can't trade the C level. There's an order to doing things. Now, I know that this is likely to have gone over your head if you're new to trading, but this is, I just want to point out by, like, by using the Dwyer methods, how you start to identify how people are trading things so wrong. The whole point of everything we do is that it's all based on one underlying theory. Everything's interlinked. You depend on your type 1 and type 2s to confirm a level, but you're, you can't use a type 1 or type 2s without confirming a level to be able to trade off, and therefore everything links together. And even down to your psychology and everything that you're doing, everything is linked. That's what makes the Dwyer method so effective, is that it's all based on one underlying theory, which is why I love it so so much. So I'm sure you're going to have some questions, but please make sure that any questions you ask in the comment section are about what we've covered in this video. So don't start asking me questions about the D level or about other things to do with Fibonacci because I want to make sure that we cover this lesson at this point in time and we'll cover other things at other points in time. So if you like this video, please do hit the thumbs up button. Like I said, any questions and comments, leave them below as long as they're relevant to this video. And if you want more videos about learning to trade, our method of trading the markets, then make sure you subscribe to this channel by clicking the links over here. Thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate it. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.